Hi everybody, it's Mike Stevenson here. Um, today we're going to look at a video where we're going to talk about the challenge of um, using a logic app and we're going to call an Azure function, but it's going to be a, a long-running function and we're going to talk about a pattern to help make that work. Um, quick shout out for Table360 who sponsor the channel at the minute and uh, sort of check out their product if you're looking for Azure monitoring tools and cost management tools. So the challenge we're looking at here is, um, let's imagine I've got a logic app, I'm going to call an Azure function, but what happens if this function has to do some work over here, and that takes quite a while to do. So there's a number of different scenarios, maybe a function's processing a big file, it's um, making a whole bunch of calls to external systems, and I've had a few people have reached out to me about um, patterns to deal with this kind of problem recently. So one of the challenges is that there's really timeouts at two points on here. So you could have a function timeout over here. So if you imagine the logic app, even if you use the function connector, this is making an HTTP call under the hood. And the function timeout can vary depending on what the app service plan or the, or the function plan it is. So you've got things like consumption, where I think the uh, the timer, I think it can be up to 10 minutes now. I think they've, they've changed that a while ago. It used to be a bit shorter than that. So you've got consumption, premium, and then you've got the app service plan. So they have um, slightly different timeout durations that could be, could be done depending on the plan. So the logic app over here, you're also going to have the HTTP timeout for the call from the logic app to the function. So the chances are, if you know, if you're using the, the function connector or the HTTP connector, you're really probably looking at about, um, I think for consumption, I think it's um, two minutes, I think it is. And then I think if you were on ice, it was um, four minutes. I can't remember what it is on standard off the top of my head, but you know, really there's, there's timeouts to think about here and here. And the key thing is if this bit of work here, you know, if you go, if you start going beyond a couple of minutes over here, you're going to start having problems. The question is, how can we design around that to um, to be able to make it work? So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, I want to talk about one of the ways in this video. So some of the ways could be things like polling patterns. So you could trigger a job and then you could poll for its completion. I think with with doing that, um, there are some challenges about, well, you trigger the job, but if you trigger a function over HTTP, you're still waiting for it to finish. So that there's a couple of challenges around that. But what we're going to do here is with a logic app, we're going to make a call to the function using the HTTP webhook connector. And what will happen is that, um, that function is going to drop a file into storage and then just return back to the logic app and the logic app because it's using the webhook connector will just block at that point and wait till it gets a call back on the address um, that it provides to the function to say you know this, this is the call back and um, you know and the, it'll call back and continue the logic app after that now what will happen over in my function app this will write to the storage account and then we'll have another function which will be part of the same function app here which is going to trigger from the blob being created. That'll go and do a bunch of work over here. So that's this long running bunch of work it's going to do. And then this logic app is going to use the callback address to call back to the logic app. That'll make it um, make it run. So how I'm going to simulate this in my, um, in my little demo is we're going to do a sleep over here for eight minutes. So what that means is um, on the function um, on the consumption function, I've modified the timeout to be 10 minutes. I think the default was five, but you can extend it. Um, I'm going to do a thread dot sleep in this function for eight minutes to simulate some work that I'm doing, which is definitely longer than the timeout would have been over here if I was just calling it directly. And that, that'll kind of work, um, work quite nicely. Now, what, um, what I think would be quite interesting here is this pattern, I could really make this function here fairly generic and it could, you know, maybe I pass a path to it if I was extending this. It writes a, a, a um, storage in different containers and I could trigger, 
different functions doing different stuff if i wanted to extend that as a pattern but um you know for the for today we'll really just keep it simple and we'll kind of you know stick with that um that original scenario okay so let's have a look at this in action then so over here i've got um if i just jump over here you'll see i've got my resource group um so here I've got my function app that's going to have my two functions in it. Here's my consumption logic app. And then here is the storage account that I'm going to write um, write messages into. So if we if we have a look over here at the, uh, the logic app now. So how I'm achieving this is um, really simple. So we've got a trigger here. I've then got the webhook um webhook action here so you can see i've got the url for my function app so in this case we can't use the um the function connector i'm just going to trigger it via its http endpoint in this case i'm just supplying um supplying the function key here and then in the body i'm going to include that would be my custom body if i wanted to supply a json object or a string with some data and then I've um, I've just added the callback URL as a property on this JSON object. Now you could do this this bit in a couple of different ways. Um, you could send it as a header, the callback URL, for example. What I need to do though is I need to have the the callback URL is going to have to go as part of the file I create in storage, so the later on function knows the callback URL. So that's really why I've put that in the body here. Okay, so. And really all I'm going to do is the, the function's going to block at this webhook and then at the end I'm just going to complete and show the body that came back from from that uh, function. So if we go over to our function app over here, so here you can see, just really simple, I've got the two functions here. So this one's the HTTP function that we're going to um, get triggered from the logic app. That's going to write a storage and then this one's the one that's going to trigger from storage and process the file. Um, so in the app files, we'll just show one bit where I've modified that timeout for anybody who's not familiar with that. So you can see up here, that's the bit where I've increased the default timeout to make sure I'm definitely going beyond what the logic app likes. Now let's have a look at the two functions in themselves. So here... You can see if I, um, if I have a quick look at the code here. So we're getting a message coming in over here. I've got a binding for the output blob. So I'll have it, I'll show you that in a moment. So that's the string that's going to be written into storage. I'm going to just read that um, message the logic app sends, and then I'm going to set the output blob string here, and then I'm going to return a response. That goes back to the logic app now what this is going to look like um, in terms of the storage account is on the integration tab you'll be to see on the outputs i've configured the azure blob storage here so over here you can see i've got a container i've got a connection string i pick up from my um from my config so this really gives me a simple way I've just set that string and the function bindings will automatically write that to storage for me. And then if we go to the storage account, so what will happen is over here in this output container, this is where we'll get um, messages written to. And I'll see if I can show an example of what it looked like previously. So here you can see um, this is the message body. And then I've got the callback URL that the, the second function is going to pick up now. There's a couple of questions that, you know, from a design perspective, what would you do about this storage account? So maybe what you might do is just set it so that these um, these blobs get deleted after a period of time, or you can make the second function clean them up or something like that. But you will be storing some state in the storage to trigger the second function. And then what will ha happen next is if we go into the second, um, the second function, so this is going to trigger from the storage account you can see i get the string which will be the content of the blob i'm going to pass that as a json object and get the callback url here i'm then going to just um, do some login to see what i'm doing 
Here I'm going to do a sleep for eight minutes. That'll simulate that long run piece of work. And then here I'm going to do a callback using the um, callback URL to the original Logic app and tell it I've done some work and here's, here's some content um, from the response. So just to show this in action, what I'm going to do, I'm going to trigger the Logic app now and we'll just flip these over into into um, file mode just so we can see the full trace on each of these as we as we run it and that one so we'll go back to the back to the logic app over here we'll just go and run this logic app so we can see this starts running this is now waiting at the um at this point here and then we should be able to see so in the first logic app, uh, sorry, the first function, we can see the function started over here. And you can see um, we've got the callback URL that we've specified. So we've written that, um, that message to storage. And then if we go to the second function over here, so you can see um, we started executing the function. We've got the, um, this one here is the mess, the URL we've pulled out of the file. We've started the sleep and that's going to now wait for eight minutes. And then I'm just going to pause the video for a second to give that a chance to run. And then we'll go on F to finish and then we'll go and check back on the Logic app over here. Over here, that'll just sit waiting and we'll wait for that to be done. So here we can see um, the function's just completed. So down here, it's continued. It sent a response back and it was an OK response back to the Logic app. And if we jump over to the other tab here, you can see if we if we refresh that, um, Logic Apps completed fine. Eight minutes and nine seconds. So that shows how we called the long running function. We got the callback back, you know, just like in that diagram before. So we got the callback URL coming. Where's my function there? We got the callback um, coming over here, and, uh, and that all works quite nicely. Now, I, th I think my gut feel is you could just extend that um, pattern to either call more different long-running functions using the same pattern. You could potentially even use the same function to trigger into different containers and build a library of long-running functions. And I think um, the other thing is it shows, I think that eight minutes, if you're using different plans, like a premium plan, you can extend that right out much longer than, than eight minutes. So hopefully um, that gives people a few ideas of how you can implement the long running pattern, really easy to do, just using the webhook to trigger the, uh, the function and then having a background function trigger from storage. Thank you for listening to this video. Um, hope you're enjoying the channel and have a great week.